Now, the Air Force has confirmed for the first time Tuesday that it's using a stealth unmanned aircraft known as the Beast of Kandahar. It's believed the drone, which is currently operating in Afghanistan, could also be tracking insurgents in other countries. For more on this, let's go to RT's Priya Shrita in our Washington studio. Priya, tell us more. Hey, Matt. Well, now questions are being raised as to exactly what this beast of Kandahar is going to do. And joining me to help talk about this is RT contributor and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Wayne, thanks so much for joining me. So first of all, what's the big deal with this drone, the beast of Kandahar? Why, why are we talking about this? Well, it appears that the uh, U.S. military and our intelligence services are pulling out the latest technology in unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, the Beast of Kandahar, also called the Loch Ness uh, Monster of Kandahar, was spotted at Kandahar, uh, Kandahar Airport. It looks like a flying wing. It's a, it's a stealth aircraft. Uh, it's uh, unmanned, and it's uh, unlike the other unmanned aerial vehicles we've seen used elsewhere, uh, the, the Predator, for example, this is jet-powered. So this is, this is fast. It's powered by a General Electric uh, fan jet engine. The others are turboprops. It uh, can uh, move in and out of a uh, targeted country at very high speeds. And uh, so it's the latest technology and uh, obviously raised a few eyebrows when it was spotted in Kandahar. That's right. And, you know, why exactly is the U.S. operating uh, this beast of Kandahar in Afghanistan if the insurgents have no radar systems there? Well, obviously, we have Afghanistan pretty well covered by uh, our own uh, surveillance capabilities, uh, aircraft, uh, ground systems, uh, and other mechanisms. But uh, Kandahar is not very far away from the uh, Iranian border, and uh, from what I understand, there has been a lot of testing going on at Nellis Air Force Base and at the Nevada test site flying unmanned aerial vehicles against uh, simulated uh, mountainous bunkers in Nevada to give people the, you know, the training uh, of what it would be, uh, look like if they were flying against a bunker, a nuclear bunker, for example, in Iran. And I guess it's not a stretch to think that maybe what's happening now uh, is that the, uh, this, uh, uh, what it's, it's called the Desert Prowler. It's the RQ-170 that was spotted at Kandahar. It, I don't think it's a stretch to uh, consider that this has probably been flying against targets deep inside Iran. And so could this possibly be an indication that maybe the United States is preparing for something bigger with Iran, maybe a war? Well, uh, we always are collecting intelligence, whether there's a war pending or not. Uh, we want to know what the capabilities of Iran are. It's also, uh, I don't think, beyond uh, uh, any um, uh, reasonable doubt that uh, this could be flying against Pakistan as well, um, especially the Baluchistan region, which is south of Kandahar. Uh, but uh, what we're seeing uh, with uh, the use of this unmanned aerial vehicle technology against Iran is to collect intelligence. Right now, what, with the RQ-170, the Desert Prowler, it's a, it's a surveillance platform. So there's electro-optical and signals intelligence, electronic intelligence payloads on board that can pick up intelligence very close to the target. And obviously, that would be communications and other uh, electronic intelligence from Iranian nuclear facilities. And do you think there are more drones out there like this? And how exactly do they fit in with President Obama's new strategy in Afghanistan? Well, obviously, the president, uh, the surge in Afghanistan, uh, the, the uh, recent revelations about Blackwater uh, Z operations in Pakistan, uh, all part of the same mix. Uh, obviously, we're seeing an increase in U.S. Uh, military and intelligence operations in Afghanistan and Pakistan and directed against Iran. We also know that uh, these unmanned aerial vehicles are now being used on the Canadian and Mexican borders, and there is a, uh, a recent, uh, recent news story about them being expanded uh, for use in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. Uh, I think what we're seeing there is the, is the militarization of law enforcement uh, functions, and I think that, that's a worrisome aspect uh, uh, domestically here in the United States. Well, it's interesting to see how these drones are changing the face of modern warfare. But for now, Matt, it's back to you. All right. Thank you very much. Priya Shrita speaking with Wayne Madsen in our Washington studio. Thanks for talking with us.